mother's house. Hello, happy people. It's Lex and Riot. I want to thank our new subscribers. It is really heartwarming that people want to follow along on our adventures. All right, y'all, I want to give you a little bit of a warning. Unlike most of my videos, today's going to be a little bit of a rantastic voyage, AKA I'm ranting. Something done pissed me off. I want to give you guys fair warning that today's video might be a little upsetting to some viewers. I honestly believe that forest camping or boondocking could be closed because of what we're going to cover today. In the last 11 months of my travels, I have been to 18 states and I have exclusively camped on public lands. I have yet to see anything like what we're going to cover today. When it comes to etiquette in general, I believe that there is common indecency and then there's levels of uncommon indecency. Today is going to be about uncommon levels of indecency. <sighs> To be perfectly honest with you guys, I really didn't want to go here about this kind of stuff because I like to keep things inspiring and fun, but a couple days ago I was sitting outside with Riot and I could see over to the road a gray F-150 travel down the forest road with a mattress and some moving boxes in the back of the truck. About 15-20 minutes later, I noticed the truck exiting but there was no mattress or moving boxes in the back of the truck anymore. Obviously, this is very suspicious. So the next day when I went for a hike, lo and behold, we have a mattress and moving boxes. The forest is not a fucking landfill. Now here's the deal. It's my responsibility to go pick up as much of that trash as possible. And here's why it is my responsibility to go pick it up. If you look at the root of the word responsibility, it's about your ability to respond. I'm able to respond by going and picking up after some D-bag that dumped it. Now I can't do anything about the fact that they dumped it, but I am responsible because I'm of able body and I got a trash bag, I'm able to go pick it up. So we're gonna do that today. You can tell what kind of high quality people we have here as we have whipped cream chargers and I worked at an ice cream place when I was in high school so I already know what this is. People sucking whippets. And then Deschutes Growery. So we have people that smoke weed. I ain't against it, I'm not mad about it, but you know, Organic tampons, everyone wants to see that in the fucking forest. And here we have the box that was in the back of that truck, I, I uh, suppose. And it looks like they dumped their other mattress because they got a lucid mattress. Now my favorite part is they left on all their information, very smart. So today's trash is brought to you by Patricia Santos. Great. Good job, Patricia. This is what I'm talking about. In this white baggie, well, clear baggie with white residue, uh, I don't think this is weed anymore. This is probably coke or meth or heroin. Super safe to have in the forest. Also, these are the type of, like, this is not your average dispersed camper. Not at all. But if we're not responsible and help pick up the stuff, we can take our camping away, in my opinion. Because why wouldn't they? What the fuck? So Riot and I got our trash bounty back and it's just frustrating because I feel like I didn't even really make a dent. And I, I get that this is why people wanna go to paid campgrounds, but for me to make my budget and money last and to really get as close into nature as I possibly can, which is a huge part of my intention, dispersed camping is the best. 
and by and large it's not this bad but this is really bad here but yeah this is why people want to go to paid campgrounds but i think i think if i'm not gonna pay for camp the the least i can do is clean up you guys if you thought that that camp spot was bad, you're about to see what else we found on a hike. And if you need blood pressure medication, I would recommend you grab it real quick. What's so fucked up is so much of this is just everyday household trash. Right, be careful. And yeah, I gotta be super careful because I don't know what my dog might step in, like all this glass. Riot, back up, back, go. Luckily I have good control of her. I'm so sorry to all you marijuana, you know, enthusiasts, but uh, leaving your branding all over the forest does not make you look responsible. The irony over here that I wanna just point out, which I think is too fantastic not to share, is we have a self-help book on uh, getting your relationship right understanding self-deception well you're deceiving yourself if you think your behavior here is okay and another self-help book what have you changed about your mind well you're a piece of shit don't change that if you have it in your head Now here's the deal you guys, the National Forest and BLM and other public lands are super aware of this issue and I put several links below to articles where I got the following facts from uh, down below. But that's why I'm not going to just go run to the ranger and say hey go pick this up because it's not the crux of their job nor should it be. So a couple facts here you guys. In the Willamette National Forest, they spend $250,000, that's a quarter million dollars, just reacting to the trash situation. The U.S. Forest Service in Colorado Springs reports it costs between $700 and $1,000 to clean up each individual non-recreational camp spot. In Bitterroot National Forest in western Montana and eastern Idaho, the annual cost of dealing with trash has escalated from $5,000 to $12,000 in the past decade. This is also an issue that is getting worse over time. With social media, YouTube, and other ways that we can all be aware, that's unacceptable. In Colorado, a man was sentenced to six months in jail after dumping about, get this, 85,000 pounds of trash in the forest. The United States Forest Service is underfunded as it is, which is why we don't want to piss off the rangers by making them clean up a bunch of trash. The whole reason that structured campgrounds, you know, the type that you go in and you gotta pay for, the type that I'm supposed to eventually work for uh, once we go back to normal, the whole reason those campgrounds are leased to concessionaires is because without the concessionaires paying to lease that campground you know to build their business off of there wouldn't be campgrounds at all because it's not within the united states forest service budget about half of the u.s forest service budget goes to fighting forest fires so that only leaves 50 percent of their remaining budget to do things that keep the forest open for us the less money and time they spend on trash pickup, the more likely they're gonna keep dispersed camping open in more areas. You can't expect people to be accountable for their actions. You can't expect people that live in town to go the extra 24 miles to a proper landfill or to pay the little bit of money to have their ship picked up. So if that's the case, then all we can do is what we can do but we are able to respond. So I personally am implementing a one bag a camp 
policy. So every single camp spot I go to, I'm going to make sure that I fill at least one bag of trash to take out with me. But I guess it's not really a rant as much as it is just a, hey, can everybody also do a one bag per camp pickup? I mean, can we agree that that we have to take responsibility for the land that, that we love and we're using. I'm sorry if this video was a bit of a bummer, but for how serious the situation is in this forest, I thought for one, it's good for people that might be new to camping to know that it exists. And two, I think it's good to bring awareness to the situation. And three, I thought it would be nice to employ other people to do the one bag per camp pickup uh, idea that I will be implementing for myself. And on that cheery note, <laughs> please like, subscribe, and I promise our other videos aren't such bummers. And until next time, have a riot. Oh, my shirt!